Welcome to the Farming Your Career podcast with host Dr. Aaron L. Albert, where we explore a variety of healthcare and pharmacy related topics, including career development, healthcare IT, informatics, innovation, entrepreneurship, STEM, women's issues, and more. Farming Your Career podcast is part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, and Aaron has had the number one most downloaded episodes of 2016 and 2017 of the entire Pharmacy Podcast Network. Now, here's your host, Dr. Aaron L. Albert. Welcome to Farming Your Career. I'm your host, Aaron Albert, and today we are focused on part two of our two-part mini-series on design and pharmacy. And today's focus specifically is on design thinking in pharmacy. Our guest is Christina Redgrave, who is an innovation solutions manager with Fuse by Cardinal Health. And if you're not familiar, Fuse is a very interesting division within Cardinal Health that focuses specifically on design thinking principles to improve healthcare. Christina has an interesting background as well. She received a master in public policy from the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, where her focus was on the intersection of technology, healthcare, policy, and social change. She's also a graduate of Northwestern University, where she received a BA in the history of science and medicine, a minor in global health, and a certificate in leadership. I also have a co-host with me today. Her name is Kristen O'Donovan, and she is a P4 pharmacy student who happened to be on rotation with me recently, also has a passion and interest in art and design. So give a listen to this two-part, part part two mini-series of design in pharmacy and specifically design thinking. So we're here at Cardinal Fuse in Columbus, Ohio. And we have a couple of guests today, one of which is a student on rotation with me right now. And Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. So my name is Christy O'Donovan. I am a pharmacy student with a business minor, um, currently on rotations and trying to learn just about as much as I can about pharmacy. Okay. And our other guest... Christina, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Christina, and I work at Cardinal Health Innovation Center, Fuse. I am an innovation solutions manager here, which means that I work with our businesses and our customers to create new products and solutions. Perfect. And so today's topic is about design thinking. This is part two of a series that we're looking at around design and pharmacy. So uh, Christy is going to interview Christina. <laughs> And let's have a a conversation about what design thinking really is. All right. So the first question I have is, how did you get to where you are in your career today? Sure. So I've worked in healthcare for my entire career in different parts of healthcare. I started out in really in the global health realm of healthcare and then transitioned into the government part of healthcare and then worked at a couple of startups in healthcare and then landed here at Fuse. Um, So I've done a lot of innovation-focused work in healthcare, and that's something that I'm really passionate about. Awesome. So now you're utilizing design thinking. Can you talk about what that is? Sure. So design thinking was a term that was coined by the IDEO founder, and it's really a series of divergent and convergent cycles to explore, experiment, and reduce risk around solutions. It helps for the companies to build empathy with their users, and empathy is really key to design thinking and going out into the field, understanding what challenges the individuals are really facing and solving those problems versus solving problems from a vacuum of just internally thinking about the problem. All right, and what do those sort of steps in the design thinking process look like? So at Fuse, we use a human-centered design thinking approach. So we have a couple of stages. We start with an explore phase where we go out in conjunction with my background and um, others that have healthcare backgrounds. We have an insights team here where, where those individuals have backgrounds in UX design and ethnography. And so we go out into the field together and we research the problem and really understand the challenges that the individuals are facing, understand more about the workflows that they experience in their day-to-day 
um, work and how we can help create those improvements. Once we have a better understanding of the problem and really validate that the problem is one that's worth solving, we then go into what we call experiment. And in the experiment phase, we're rapidly prototyping with the end user, and that may be a pharmacist, that could be a patient, um, it could be a health system nurse, it could be any user of the product. And we're getting feedback on what we've designed and iterating on that. And then once we've done that, we then go to the launch stage or the initial launch stage called pilot. And we're really piloting that in the field and um, validating the business proposition and the market value of that business. And how does that process apply specifically to healthcare? So healthcare is a really great place to use design thinking because so much of understanding your user is important in designing solutions. So if we design solutions without the human in mind and without having empathy for that user, then a lot of times we design solutions that don't actually meet the needs of the user. So what problems with healthcare are you using design thinking to try to solve? So I think you can use design thinking for every healthcare problem because so much of healthcare is about the patient and it's about the, the pharmacist, it's about the nurse, it's about the doctor, and it's really understanding their perspective and having empathy and making sure that the solutions fit within their existing day jobs or the patient, their how they live their daily life and making sure that the solution really helps to improve their life. What do you think makes a good design thinker if someone wants to go through that process? What makes somebody good at that? So I think that anybody probably can be a design thinking um, individual or anybody can be good at design thinking. I really think that it what makes you good at design thinking is having empathy for the user. The empathy, again, is, and I've said this a lot, but empathy is core to design thinking and really understanding and listening. Being a good listener is really a key to design thinking. So when you go into the field, a lot of that is listening to the perspective of the other person at the other side of the table or as you're watching someone do their day job, um, really just observing and being a good steward of observation. So with that being said, how do you think a pharmacist could use design thinking in their own work? So I think pharmacists have actually a really great perspective because especially as you think of the evolving role of the pharmacist and how they interact with the patient and and as they take on more of that responsibility for the chronic care management of patients, they have been interacting with their patients for years and they have that frontline perspective of the issues that their patients deal with on a daily basis. So as they you know, may just be having a side conversation with their patient as they're picking up their prescription, they have an insight into that patient's life that a lot of people don't have, and they can design solutions and even offer different things within their pharmacy to help their patients have better um, success with their condition management and better outcomes. So what kind of role do you think that technology plays in this whole design thinking process? So design thinking is often used as a methodology as we design technology. So when we're thinking about designing technology-based solutions, we always want to understand the experience that the individual that we're designing for goes through. So under having that understanding, I think, is instrumental to designing good technological solutions. So with these sort of technological solutions, are you finding that healthcare providers are embracing integrating those types of solutions into their practices? So I think those that fit within the existing workflows that they're already experiencing on a day-to-day basis um, definitely makes the adoption rate higher. So anytime that you are creating a solution that doesn't fit into their current way of doing things, there is a behavior change that has to happen. But if you can create solutions that are almost invisible to the user, that and I, what I mean by that, and there is a um, one of the heads of the head of innovation, and one of the health systems had this quote around, "Let's make technology solutions invisible." And what's meant by that is really that it should integrate and it shouldn't be burdensome. It shouldn't add any additional burden to the user. 
it should fit into their day-to-day interactions and not be a barrier to communication. It shouldn't be a barrier to them doing their jobs efficiently, etc. So what do you think the future looks like when you're looks like, excuse me, when you're thinking about technology and design thinking and healthcare? So I'm hopeful that the design thinking methodology will continue to be adopted by health systems. There's a lot of health systems that are actively integrating this into how they think about workflow improvements, product placement, technology solution improvements. Um, And I think that other parts of healthcare, as we mentioned, like pharmacy can start integrating this and pharmacists as they think about new models of care and how they are serving their customers, being the patient. Um, I am hopeful that more and more of this gets distributed across healthcare. And is design thinking something that you could teach these people to use? Is there a way to teach that process or how do people learn it? So there are a lot of online resources for design thinking education. Um, So I would recommend that everybody just do a Google search on design thinking. There's a lot of educational materials. We also have Um, On Cardinal Essential Insights, we have a primer on design thinking, just describing it more in depth as to what design thinking is and why it's important. But there's a lot of resources out there. And then I think just, you know, listening to the people that you talk to on a daily basis as a pharmacist, listening to your customers and then having that inform how you change your business is really how you could immediately start implementing it. What do you think is the ideal workspace if you're going to implement design thinking? Do you think it's more suited to some workspaces than others, or is there an ideal setup for that? Um, So I think that if you're doing design thinking processes and a workspace like Fuse, where it's really open and there's the ability to collaborate with your team members who may have a different perspective from you, definitely fosters more of that type of thinking because I can go over to my colleague who has a very different experience than me and and may have gone out to an interview with me and heard something different and we can collaborate in that way. Um, So I think that as you're thinking about if a design thinking process that having an open environment that fosters collaboration is really important. So if a business is thinking about starting to use design thinking, how would that benefit a business? So I think that, um, not to be too repetitive, but there's a lot of benefits to a business. I think when you start designing for the patient or whoever you're designing the solution for in mind and really understand the root causes and the problems, that you are creating solutions that actually add value. And when you add value, you can have a more successful business proposition in my belief. So I think that they're directly correlated. And Christina, what is your favorite part about design thinking overall? Um, I think my favorite part is actually doing the rapid prototyping with the customers. Um, and if I had didn't have to pick one, but could say two, my other favorite part of um, design thinking, which I haven't gone that in depth about, is really the ideation part. So getting in a room, thinking really broadly once you know what the problem is, and thinking about all the different potential solutions that are out there and then narrowing them down. And our podcast, Farming Your Career, focuses on career development. And I know here at Cardinal Fuse, you have several pharmacists on staff. What types of professional education in terms of background have you experienced that got you into design thinking and or the other pharmacists that you have on staff here? So... I would say from an educational perspective, I have my undergrad degree in history of science and medicine and global health, so it's really more healthcare focused. And then my graduate degree is um, focusing on the intersections of healthcare policy and technology and social change. And I got my master's in public policy. So um, that stuff all helped me, I think, think more broadly and and think differently. I think that that's one of the key things is to be able to think differently. Um, But a lot of my education, and I'm using air quotes, um, around design thinking has happened by doing it. And so prior to being at Fuse, I worked in startups and you're 
having to rapidly think through new ideas and new solutions and pivot quickly and um, really understand the person that you're designing the solution for in order to be successful, in order to get your product to, to sell, right? If I have a product that I've designed that has no buyer, that's a problem. Um, so a lot of what my education and design thinking has been has been by doing. So let's say hypothetically there's a pharmacist or a healthcare provider out there who's curious about design thinking. They go online, they do their homework, and they learn about it. How do they go about getting their companies, their pharmacies, their businesses kind of culturally thinking in the framework of design thinking? So I think it's bringing people along on the journey. Okay. <laughs> and I think some of that is it's stakeholder building and, you know, even... Here, we're constantly working with our business counterparts who may not have had as much experience with design thinking, and part of um, my responsibility is helping them to understand our process and how it really values, how it creates value for their business and the bottom line for of their business. And so I think that as people are trying to sell the design thinking methodology in their organizations, continuing to tie it back to why it's important that they understand their users, why it helps the business be successful. I think anytime you can tie it to success metrics. Um, and then patient outcomes. You know, you look at patient engagement models and a lot of what's being now demanded by patients from a consumerism perspective, there's going to be more and more of a demand for people to actually understand the patient and understand the pain points that patients are facing and to design solutions with that in mind. So I think it's a business imperative and will continue to increasingly be so. So Christina, before we go and go into the speed round and I'll hand it back to Christy, <laughs> uh, where can people learn more about you and or Fuse? Sure. So. Um, you can learn more about me via LinkedIn. I also have a profile on Fuse. I also am one of Cardinal Health's Essential Insight thought leaders, so I have some, there's some information about me on that site as well. Um, and then Fuse, yeah, definitely go to our website. We have a form on there if you're interested. We have tours. You can come and learn more about Fuse by visiting. Um, we also have community events, so keep a lookout for those. We're always open to having people from the community come and learn more about design thinking. We had one this fall about designing the um, designing for living, not aging, and brought in a bunch of experts that talked about the design thinking methodology, but in the context of designing solutions for the aging population. So keep an, a lookout for those events as well. Perfect. And Cardinal Fuse is located here in Columbus, Ohio. Yes. Are there other offices or... Yes, yeah, so we have two other offices. The main Fuse office is here in Columbus, located just down the road from headquarters. Okay. Um, but we have a very different work environment than headquarters. We have, a, as I said earlier, an open work environment. We have a more casual work environment in that we can come to work dressing more casually. Um, we all sit at communal tables and sit in a team-based environment. Perfect. So... Let's get into the speed round. Speed we can wrap round. This up. <laughs> All right. What books are you reading right now? So the book I'm reading right now is The Startup Way, which is really about innovation in um, different ecosystems, but there's a whole part of it on corporate innovation. And what podcasts are you listening to? So I'm much more of a book on tape person than a podcast person, but now that I've met Erin, I'll definitely be subscribing <laughs> to her pharmacy podcast. And if you had to pick one word to describe the U.S. healthcare system right now, what word would you pick? So I think that's really a hard question because <laughs> <laughs> there's so many words that come to mind when I think about the U.S. healthcare system, but I'll pick dynamic. All right. And this is my favorite question, I think. I'm always looking to hear this from people. So what's the best career advice that you've ever received? So, and this is one that probably a lot of people say, and um, so... Hopefully it doesn't sound too cliche, but I, I really believe it, that finding mentors, and I say mentors because I think that, that you need more than one mentor, um, and mentors from different parts of your career that help strengthen different parts of you and, and give you feedback. 
Um, and in line with that, never, um, never be too afraid to ask for help. I think that all of us can always grow, so asking for help should never be looked at as a negative. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Christina, thank you for being part of the Pharmacy Podcast and farming your career and giving us a tour today over here in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. The sun is out and it was phenomenal to see the Fuse set up here. It's unlike anything yeah. else I've seen in healthcare. So we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for coming. Thanks for listening to another episode of Farming Your Career. I'm your host, Dr. Aaron Albert. For more on me, head on over to my website, AaronAlbert.com, or you can follow me at Twitter, at Aaron L. Alberts, or you can discover my new online courses. I've been asked a billion times to offer some courses, so now here they are. You can head on over to AaronAlbert.com and click on Courses, and you'll see a complete list there. And I plan on bringing more in the future. So thanks for listening. I hope you found this two-part mini-series on design thinking in pharmacy as fascinating as I did. I really have a newfound appreciation for the design thinking process, as well as the environment in which we practice. So important when we talk to Fiona in episode one. And if you haven't looked or listened to episode one of this two-part mini-series, please go back and listen to Fiona's talk. Uh, she's an a designer out of Italy, and she's designed some of the most beautiful pharmacy spaces I've ever seen. I hope you found this helpful. We'd love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out on Twitter again. My handle is at Aaron L. Albert and give us some feedback or reach out, of course, at Farming Careers or Pharmacy Podcast. And please leave us a rating at iTunes. Your feedback is absolutely critical to us. Until next time, I'm Aaron Albert. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Farming Your Career podcast, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. If you have ideas or comments for Erin, be sure to contact her through Twitter. Follow her at Erin L. Albert. And remember to keep your career growing.